We don't need to be in political union with the EU to play a significant role in Europe. We've nothing to lose and everything to gain from Brexit, not least the ability to bank nine billion a year that we will recoup from direct contributions alone and put that money into projects we know can be of far greater benefit to Britain. The simple fact is, whatever else you hear in the course of this election campaign, UKIP is the only party with the money. We're the only political party that can make spending commitments without raising taxes or adding a single penny to the national debt. We can give more to the NHS, to defence, the police, prison service and border agency. We can cut business rates, support students and carers, incentivise house building, honour the military government and yes, give much needed tax cuts to both the lowest paid and that squeezed middle. And what's more, we're the only party whose fiscal plans have been fully costed and independently verified, as you can see in this 20-page document accompanying our manifesto today. We can show you the money because we have the money. And we have the money because we are not afraid to tackle head-on the big issues the other parties would frankly rather forget about. Take HS2. UKIP's made no secret of the fact that we'll scrap this white elephant, saving four billion in capital expenditure by the end of the parliament. Another to -do, taboo we want to break. The Barnet formula, disowned by Lord Barnet himself and dissed by two parliamentary committees. Yet Westminster is far too worried about the wrath of the Scots to replace this outdated funding formula for the devolved nations with a needs-based system. Well, UKIP isn't frightened and we will replace it, phasing in the changes to save five and a half billion pounds a year by the end of the Parliament. Another taboo I want to break this morning is the huge overseas aid budget. We've learned this week that the National Crime Agency is setting up a new department to prevent misuse of the massive 11 billion pound foreign aid budget, proving what UKIP has long said. Far too much of the money is eaten up by corruption and falls into the wrong hands. What's more, aid goes to countries that have their own space and nuclear weapons programmes. It's spent on projects without clear or measurable outcomes. Much of it goes to middlemen who run it for profit. Aid, far from helping the starving in the world, has in some respects become a fat cat industry. We'll cut the overseas aid budget to 0.2% of GNI. That's the same as the United States. This still leaves us a substantial four billion to meet our international responsibilities, more than given by Spain and Italy combined. We'll prioritise emergency relief, clean water and sanitation programmes, and initiatives that provide healthcare and inoculation against preventable diseases. In other words, the kind of projects the British taxpayer expects and wants to see their hard-earned cash spent on. UKIP also believes the cost of government can be cut dramatically without any noticeable effect on performance. In the summer of 1940, when Britain was facing its greatest crisis in history at the outset of the Second World War, the government had nine cabinet ministers. Now, we have 22 secretaries of state, and I think it's at least 87 ministers or parliamentary undersecretaries of state. The Department for International Development the Department for Energy and Climate Change, the Department for Culture, Media and Sport. These are all departments we believe we could merge into others. <laughs> the money we save from leaving the EU, replacing the Barnet formula, scrapping HS2, reducing the size of government and decreasing the overseas aid budget, taken together with ending funding to what we call fake charities or state-sponsored lobbying and health tourism while reaping a modest income from charging foreign lorries to use our roads gives us a huge sum to invest in Britain, over 32 billion a year by 2020. And again, as I've already said, this is fully costed, independently verified and without a penny to the national debt or raising taxes. More money to spend means more money to go back to the taxpayer. We'll take everyone out of minimum wage, out of tax, and raise the personal allowance to 13,000 a year at least. That's higher than any other party is pledging. 
We'll also raise the 40% tax threshold to 55,000 to provide a boost for middle income earners who are no longer the wealthy in the country this tax was meant for, but they're school teachers, train drivers, senior nurses. And as Nigel said, we'll give even more help to the squeeze middle by introducing a new mid-rate of tax set at just 30% for those earning between 45,300 and 55,000 pounds a year. UKIP is proud to put money back in your pocket. Couples will get a boost for our plans to raise the transferable tax allowance to £1,500. And we'll help families who want to leave their treasured possessions to their children by abolishing inheritance tax completely. Our plans won't discriminate against single people or those who have personal assets that don't take the form of bricks and mortar. The money only UKIP can find will also make a significant contribution to tackling a growing scandal in our country, the appalling way in which many of our vulnerable elderly people are treated. According to Age UK, there are now nearly a million people between the ages of 65 and 89 who have social care needs that aren't being met. UKIP will reverse the coalition's cuts to social care by spending an additional 1.2 billion every year by the end of the next parliament and making services more efficient by bringing the NHS and social care together. This is another common sense solution that will have a knock-on effect of helping solve the problem of one million hospital bed days lost every year because patients can't be discharged if they don't have enough help at home. The NHS itself, we've already said UKIP will fund 20,000 new nurses, 8,000 new doctors and 3,000 new midwives. We'll put a GP into every A&E improve mental health services and scrap those hated hospital parking charges. And today, I want to talk about a new health pledge in our manifesto. We will build a dedicated, fully staffed, fully equipped military hospital. Britain... Britain is the only major country in Europe that no longer has one, and it's time that changed. Our armed forces must have access to expert care, and our new 500-bed military hospital, with accommodation for 150 family and friends on site, will meet the specific needs of serving forces, personnel and veterans. Looking after our armed forces is a priority for UKIP, and we feel especially strongly about the need to support veterans. For those who are facing homelessness, we will open eight halfway house hostels over the next five years, as well as build 500 affordable rent homes every year for ex-forces personnel. These measures will go a long way towards compensating our brave armed forces who have been so badly let down over the course of the last government. <laughs> Under the terms of our NATO membership, we should be spending 2% of GDP on defence, yet UKIP is the only party that is actually pledging to meet those obligations. We'll phase in our increased defence spending, providing an additional £4 billion a year by 2020 to return funding for our armed forces to the level it reached before the coalition made such deep and damaging cuts. UKIP will rebuild our armed forces and restore them to their rightful place among the most professional, flexible and effective fighting force in the world, able to meet the security demands of the modern era. Our spending plans also mean we can make sure armed forces on active service overseas do not pay any income tax. <laughs> it's the right thing to do as is bestowing a National Defence Medal to all our veterans, regardless of their rank or length of service. To strengthen our internal security, UKIP will put an additional 6,000 frontline personnel into the border agency, police force and prison service. We'll draw a line under the coalition's cuts and get our law enforcement agencies back into a fit state. We'll give former servicemen and women first call on these jobs. So not only will UKIP secure our borders, put more police on the streets and deliver safer prisons, we will fully honour the military covenant too. <laughs> UKIP is also the party of small business. 
will cut business rates by offering 20% small business rate relief to potentially 90% of business properties, some 1.5 million in total, that have a rateable value of less than £50,000. And because cash flow is difficult enough at the best of times, and no small business should ha have to act as a banker for their clients, we'll introduce a scheme to stop big companies making repeated late payments to smaller companies. When payments haven't been made, we'll allow small companies to provide evidence of repeated late payments to HM Revenue and Customs in the strictest confidence. HMRC will then carry out an inspection of the big companies' records. If they're found to be systematically exceeding their contractual terms of payments, they'll be fined. Fines will escalate for repeat offenders and be noted in the offending company's statutory accounts. I think that will solve the problem. Yeah. While we're on the matter of business and employment, let's look at pensions. When you've looked forward to your retirement, sudden changes to the state pension age can wreck your plans. UKIP will ease the pain caused by recent changes by introducing a flexible state pension window. In the same way that you can currently delay taking your state pension in exchange for a slightly higher amount, we'll give pensioners the option to take their pension slightly earlier for a lower amount, from the age of 65. Our proposals will especially help women who've borne the brunt of recent changes. And we will, of course, continue all pensioner benefits, such as free bus passes and TV licences, the winter fuel allowance, free prescriptions and so on, without means testing. Not only that, by repealing the Climate Change Act, which makes energy companies add, or will make them add, nearly 9.8 billion onto our energy bills by 2020, we'll cut fuel bills for everyone, for every household, by an average of £197 by then. And because it's discrimination, to put it frankly, we'll also make the way you pay your bills fairer by stopping energy companies charging extra for customers who use prepayment meters or prefer to pay quarterly paper bills. Yeah.